Hey. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Hi, yes. Dawn. Hi, yep. Mark. Hi, Haley. Hello, yes. Hey. Breathing a sigh of relief, I'm on. That's <laughs> right. How's everybody doing on this beautiful day? Good. Great. Waiting for the hurricane. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Hi, Dennis. Hey. Hello there. How are you doing? Okay, how are you doing? Good. I have to kind of make an adjustment here. It's, I, 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 I have to use my iPad, so that's a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, that's about it. Hi, Terry. Hi. Hi, Terry. Hello, how are you? Hi, good. Terry. How are you doing? Good, good. How's everybody? Pretty okay. good. Well, no, thanks. Okay, so far. Good. So far, so good, huh, Dan? <laughs> yep, that's it. As long as this technology oh. works. Oh, I know, huh? We're getting to be old pros at this. That's right. <laughs> I take nothing for granted. Yeah, neither do I. <laughs> Who's uh, who's taking notes on this meeting? I am. Okay, thank you. Yep. The next, the next two meetings. Okay. We're gonna see Terry kick back and put her feet up, huh? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Hello. How you doing? I'm okay, thanks. Thank Good. you, Haley. No problem. Hi, Chad. Hi, Chad. Haley, have you heard from anybody that said they couldn't make it? No. Yeah, no, have I. Okay. Everybody excited about the upcoming block party? Yes. I'll be there. That's a really nice event. Yeah. Yes, it is. Really well done. It was very well done last year. It's a lot of fun and it pulls people out that, you know, at least I will say for me, folks I haven't seen in a while because I don't have kids in school anymore. So. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. Was it in the senior senate newsletter? What? The block party? No, because I didn't find yeah. out the date and time. Oh, okay. Because I was like, I didn't know about the block party. What is the block party? It's sponsored by the town or the bid in Amherst College. Um, so it's kind of like a welcome back for the students. So they have like circus performers and live music and a lot of town departments are participating this year. And like usually the restaurants will, like they close down Main Street and there's like tons of food vendors and, and lots of stuff. So I think they had like thousands, there were thousands of people last year. So it's a good wow. way to be seen. 
last year there was a huge stage set up at um, I think that's May, uh, North Pleasant and Amity, and um, it was and and a lot of uh, street lighting, auxiliary street lighting, yeah. big crowds, uh, really well received. So I, I I expect it to be just as good this year. They're going to have two stages this year. Really? Two stages? Yeah. Where will the other one be? At the other end? I think, yeah, down near Amherst College. I wasn't there last year, but the, the previous year they had a small stage by um, Kendrick and then oh. a big one. So kind of, you know, either end of the, okay. of the area. Okay. I think I'm going to get us started because I do believe we have quorum. I know we are missing a few folks, but. For, just for be... my benefit, who are we missing? So. Well, yeah. we're going to do roll call. So you're going to. Oh, okay, good. That's what I'm. <laughs> you're going to hear. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Do you have All a right. list of the people who are on the council, Don? Um, I, I have a list from the last minutes you sent of who was here and who wasn't. So I'm assuming I have it all. Yeah. So, and if not, as we do roll call, if you need. Yeah, we do the roll call. That's fine. Yeah. All right. That's okay. Fine. So I'm going to call the Council on Aging meeting to order pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, section 18. This meeting of the Council on Aging is being conducted via remote participation. This meeting is also being recorded. Now take roll call. Um, Terry? Here. Chad? Yeah. Dennis? Right here. Dawn? Right here. Sarah? Here. Mark? Here. Jacqueline? Is not here. And Christina, I don't believe is with us. Okay. Um, are there any members of the public who wish to make comment? Haley, do you see anybody? No. No. Okay. All right. We will start then with the director's update. Yes, so there has been a lot of happenings um, over the summer. We, some of you, this may have happened after our last meeting in June or July, um, but Donna Hancock retired. She was our nutrition coordinator. Um, so she was the one who oversaw the Highland Valley Meals Program, both the home delivered meals and the grab and go meals. Um, We've had that position posted since the end of July, and there's been a few applicants, but their skill set doesn't really match the position or what we're looking for. So we haven't had a whole lot of luck um, in trying to find a replacement for her. During her absence, um, Julia, our volunteer and outreach coordinator, has stepped up to the plate and done a really fantastic job of overseeing that program, um, you know, She's down in the lunchroom every day for the bulk of her day, um, trying to balance both her responsibilities as volunteer coordinator and now doing the nutrition program. Um, so that we are definitely searched thin. Um, some of you may have heard we also lost our admin assistant, Al. That happened in early August. So we've been without a nutrition coordinator and an admin assistant for about a month, maybe a little over a month now. Um, you know, it's been very stressful. I have to give a tremendous thanks and, you know, appreciation to Helen and Julia and myself and our, our volunteers and um, for everybody for holding it down as best we can. Um, the staffing shortage has necessitated that we close the lounge on occasion if there's not going to be any staff or if staff need to leave for a meeting or go to lunch. It's necessitated closing programs. Um, for the day because we don't have enough staff support. Um, you know, we had a period of time where it was just Helen and I at the senior center trying to run everything. 
Um, I had a day where I was actually the only person there at the senior center. And so my focus was on getting lunches out and that was about it. So I, I can definitely say we are feeling the stress of being short staffed, mm -hmm. but thankfully our new admin assistant will be starting next Thursday, the 21st. Um, her name's Diana Wheeler. Um, currently she's working at the town hall at the clerk's office. Um, but she will be joining us next week. And that'll be a huge relief, I think, for everybody, because it really has been very hectic um, trying to balance everything and trying to mitigate people's expectations when staff realistically can't can't always help or can't immediately address an issue or someone's question. Um, so everyone who's been patient with us, we thank you. Um, I don't know if people have questions about the staffing. Um, I could move on if not. I think Mark no. has his hand up. Yes. No. No. No, I'm always up. Thank you. Oh, okay. okay. Cool. Oh, sorry. I guess. Sorry. Um, so yeah, so the staffing's been an issue. Uh, we're also kind of seeing a trickle effect now where we don't have our volunteer coordinator and we have been without enough staff support to give our volunteers enough to do. So we are trying to remind folks that this is just temporary because we've had some volunteers say, you know, it's I'm not sure if I want to continue volunteering because it's been kind of quiet, but it's kind of quiet because we don't have the ability to step back and say, these are the things we want you to be working on because really every day for the last month or so has been just taking things day by day. There hasn't been a lot of long range planning because there can't be when you're working with so many variables. Um, so again, I just wanna say thank you to, to the staff, to the volunteer team, to everyone, um, you know, we made it work and no one went hungry and I'm tremendously proud of that. And once we have our team back together, um, you know, we can get right back into the swing of things and trying to, you know, recoup some of that ground. Um, you know, I said, while I was talking about staffing, you know, the program cut. So again, having to unexpectedly close down for an hour or two hours or the whole day, um, we've had to do that quite a few times. And then all while balancing that issue, has, um, we've definitely seen a couple folks um, who pop in and they are members of our homeless community. And there are also people who have really significant mental health problems, um, you know, something really severe like schizophrenia. Um, so we've had a couple issues with people who come in and just make people uncomfortable because they're dominating the conversation and the conversation skews very negative. It tends to skew towards a lot of their, the problems that they're having or the issues they're having with other people and wanting to punch that person or wanting to punch my staff because my staff is telling them, please don't talk that way. You know, while people are trying to play cards, it's really not appropriate. Um, so that has been an issue, but that thankfully um, is being addressed. I had a meeting with Gabe Ting and Paul Bockelman, and we talked about security. And um, so APD will be doing a little bit more foot patrols in our area, just coming in and having a presence, which I am really appreciative of because, you know, in situations like that, and particularly with really acute mental illness, what I'm looking for in a response is somebody who has the authority to remove that person if they become an issue, because tensions can run high. And this particular individual has a really lengthy criminal history, uh, from what I understand, and it has a propensity towards violence. Um, so for me, that's what I'm looking for in a response is if things are getting out of hand, and again, we've got a group of older adults and one of them is in a wheelchair and one of them has very low mobility. If something happens, I need to have that person removed and as quickly as possible. Um, so I'm, I'm really thankful that APD has done that for us. Um, I don't know if people have questions about that. That just kind of carries on conversations that we've had from months past where, you know, people are sleeping trying to sleep at the bank center or they're sleeping outside or they're stealing donations or they're causing scenes and just really trying to get a handle on making people feel safe, making my staff feel safe, making you know everybody who comes into the bank center feel like they can comfortably be there. And John, you have a question. Yeah, just quickly. I, I know you were discussing this when we were in talking about the possibility of writing a grant. Uh, I just want to make sure, are you satisfied with the response that you got? Because I know that day you had, had a meeting with the yes. people. 
Okay. Yes, I think I think the town manager really understands and he has been really great about meeting with me and talking this out and trying to come up with some solutions. Mm -hmm. um, Good. Yeah, thank you. So, um, I do I do want to <clears throat> I do want to ask a question mm -hmm. and is to my recollection I don't remember this being a habitual uh problem in the past and I'm wondering if the church that used to house the homeless people I wonder if they're still helping people why would they want to come into the bank center to sleep if they had a place to go to? And they mm -hmm. traditionally, that church right over there, I think it's first churches, they mm -hmm. always helped. And they have sofas and they would allow people to sleep there. So what has changed that made this uh, situation mm -hmm. arise? Mm -hmm. And how long has it been going on? I don't remember mm -hmm. it being a past in the past years. Mm -hmm an issue from what i understand from past directors it, it was an issue but i don't i think what's changed and as far as i know the church does still help and even craig's doors has expanded a lot of services but um you know in my experience working with individuals who are experiencing homelessness there are folks who want help and but there are also folks who who don't and for whom the structure of that kind of setting is just not what they're looking for I also think there are other factors, you know, there, there's certainly been a spike in mental health issues. You know, I think all of us read the headlines and we know that taking more prominence, um, street drugs have gotten a lot more potent. They've gotten a lot, you know, it's not, um, you know, when you read about fentanyl and Trank and some of these other things, like they are a lot more destructive, I think, to communities as a whole. Um, so why? I don't think we could pinpoint it on any one thing, but I, I think there are a number of social factors that contribute to that. And, um, you know, Amherst provides a lot of services. And when you provide a lot of services, it does attract more individuals who might potentially want those services. Um, so I think part of the influx could just be more people coming in and trying to get help because we do offer really great help and support, um, you know, through the Survival Center and through Craig's Doors and a myriad of other places. Um, so I, I don't know if I can totally answer that question in a satisfactory way, um, but I can definitely tell you that within the last six months or so, I've definitely noticed what seems to be an uptick. You know, it's it's not um, it's not every day, so I wouldn't want people to feel like afraid. It's not every day, but it happens enough and it's starting to be a regular thing. So maybe not like once a week, but maybe, you know, two times a month and that's happening every month. And then that becomes more and more of an issue. And certainly you have to worry that once people start coming in with those kind of behavior patterns, are they going to attract more people to join them? Because there's a hangout spot right in front of the bank center across from Mexicalito where a lot of people congregate. And, you know, I was walking a woman home the other day. People are hanging out there and they're dropping N-bombs and F-bombs. And I'm trying to walk this poor woman home. And, you know, it's people congregate downtown, people congregate where they feel safe and they feel like they can kind of lay low. And I think that is true with the bank center. It offers free bathrooms. It has AC in the summer. It has heat in the winter. You know, it is an attractive place to hang out, you know, for any member of the community. Is that kind of what you were looking for in an answer? Uh, what, what happened to, well, you kind of touched a little bit on the the frequency. Um, what happened to the group that is not there to arrest them, but there mm -hmm. to try to keep order? Press. Uh, yeah. Forgot the name. Yeah. Press. Press. Yeah. That's the the community responder program. Um. So I think you know their their director's been on administrative leave. So I I think things are. I don't know how they are, but I, I imagine there's a street, uh, a transitional period, right? When somebody, when your director is gone, um, you know, so I do think that in the future, we will be able to rely on them more, but just right now for probably factors I don't know about it, that's just not happening. Um, you might want to research with the library, Christina. It's a typical uh, similar place um, to the bank center. Um, if you want to hear more about how things are done. Um, 
Craig's place uh, is changing what they're doing. Um, but uh, the UU Church still has a little going on. Uh, ACC, um, Amherst Community Connections is still doing what it's doing. Um, but yeah, there's there's um, different places in Amherst that uh, they can go and different places in Amherst they can't go. It's my understanding that Craig's stores expanded so that they would not have to go leave in the morning, that they can be there a full day. Yes. And they so they do they... offer the 24-7 mm -hmm. care now, which is really great because I that that was that was needed for them. Where, where uh, are they located, by the way? Um, well, I first want to just acknowledge Jacqueline's had her hand up for a while. Okay. Um, and the Craig stores is kind of spread out. They have the um they have like the resource center, they have some rooms at the former Econo Lodge, and then there's another location that I just can't remember. Okay. The church itself, that um that church, the Protestant church by UMass. No, they're they're or, not at or, the Baptist or church Lutheran, anymore. Or, or Lutheran. Yes, they're at the Lutheran now. Yeah. Lutheran. Lutheran is what I meant. Okay. Jacqueline? I defer to the others because I've been trying, I've been having technology problems and I've been trying to lower my hand. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> yeah, I think I can. I I think I, yeah. Does that fix it? Because you don't have a question anymore, right? You said? No, I, okay. I think Christina touched on uh, what I came in late with my technology, great expertise. And uh, you were, um, I guess, in the middle of this conversation. And my question was resources, other resources in the community, uh, because of the way we tend to, whether they be elders or, or youngers, we look at people who are different. And provisions are often not made uh, to address some of the issues. Uh, but you brought up the Crest uh, program in the in the town, and I I just be interested in other public health resources that are made available and not just left to the church. Um, because I've heard that. Yes. A couple of years ago that there was something like a seven year waiting list, not for people who were houseless necessarily in the same way, but for for seniors. Yeah, I have checked it more more recently that they that there is a seven year waiting list. And um, my question was, uh, do seniors not matter? Um when thinking about that. And we're thinking, I guess, somebody may be outside the box. Uh, it sounded like you might have been discussing a, a younger population, but still, they're people. And oh, absolutely. there are taxes being paid by local citizens. And sometimes we forget. Sometimes we forget. And I'm not a Pollyanna. I'm not a Pollyanna. Um, I grew up in a situation in Macon, Georgia, where there was there had to be compassion for people. Um, I grew up in a household, a, a three bedroom house. I've told the story before um, about twenty five people, and if somebody was having a real hard time, my big mama would open much to my chagrin, though it didn't directly impact me. And I wondered, how can you do that? And more modern days, I think that I, I think that you shouldn't have to worry alone or the senior programs and services. But what about the community? I know you're affected, so it causes you to speak out. Mm -hmm. But I think 
when I was here back in the late 70s and 80s, there was a woman who was a very uh, who was very active at um, the survival center. And she'd come to our services at the Unitarian Church every Sunday morning to remind the congregation that people are starving and people have no place to go in Amherst. And it was like a jolt meant to awaken um, an affluent, predominantly white congregation to the fact that there's a different world out there from much too many people. Perhaps at a future meeting, we could look to invite other folks in our community to talk more about yes. these issues and what's in place and particularly yes. with the, the lens on supporting, you know, what the senior population is, is looking like there. So yeah. Yeah. I think that would, that would be um, important to do. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Haley, did you have any other? Yeah, so I can also update you and let you all know that I met with Dave Zomack and Rob Mora um, to talk about what um, priorities I'd like to identify in using ARPA funds. Um, you know, we, we did a walkthrough of the building um, and, you know, looked at some of the, the spatial deficiencies and things that, you know, we could hopefully do to improve that first floor area. So I thought that was really helpful um, and appreciated them taking the time to meet with me and hear all of my list of things that I want. And I think that the center really needs, um, you know, with that, again, with that special focus on exercise and social participation and um, and getting a functional kitchen um, inside. So those are kind of the, the top areas that I was, um, you know, talking about with them. Um, and then the other things I had are just calendar things, which we can talk about under old business. Um, you know, can I just some, ask one question with regards yeah. to ARPA? Mm -hmm. Do you, and I feel like I'm a broken record because I'm, I feel like I'm constantly asking this question, but are we are we confirmed to get? Yeah, I think, yes. But I, I also would say that, you know, in my opinion, it's you, you should never just settle, right? When you get yeah. something, there's always something more you could add on to that. Um, so, and, you know, and Dave did remind me, you know, we can do capital request plans and, and, you know, things like that, that budget season is going to be coming up and we will. So, um, but yeah, I definitely would say that we can always keep pushing for senior issues for getting, you know, th there's a lot of work that needs to be done to the bank center and that could honestly benefit other departments. You know, um, we do share a space now with Crest, with public health, with the veterans office, um, with DEI benefits um, to, you know, fixing up the building that they apply to everybody there um, and people mm -hmm. who want to just come and use the space. So mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I here. think it's beneficial to the community yeah. as a whole yeah, to do, sure. you know, upgrades and improve, improve yeah. facilities. Okay, so my takeaway is it sounds like we're going to get money, but we need to keep reminding mm -hmm. the politicians in town that hold the purse strings about who we are and what we need. I would say so. I think, yes. I would say yes. And I would just say that really because COVID made us very quiet and I think older adults have a lot to say and they should be heard. And if, if we're not speaking at public meetings, at town meetings, then people don't know about what we do or why it matters. Um, so yeah, I would say we can, you know, you can always be advocating. Am Amherst is a very a great community if you want to be an advocate. Um, and I think people are receptive to that. I just don't think they know about us. Um, so we need to be more, a little bit more in your face in a nice way. And Jacqueline and Christina. Is there any Christina, trained lobbyists amongst us? Mm, we should we should have recruited some for board members. Jacqueline, you had your hand up. Yes, uh, in, in keeping with that part of the conversation and the agenda, I, I um, I'm, I'm 
aware of the fact that the center is a place for the services to be offered. But I've encountered over the past period of COVID especially, um, a question that based on my observation, how do we how do we address issues for seniors who may not be coming into the building, but have services that would provide for them, uh, like seniors who have memory issues uh, or mobility issues um, or attention span issues. And I know that they're categorized in a certain way in academia. But thinking about including them in as we think about what to do and how to use the ARPA monies, um, how how might that how might that figure into the conversation? Sure. So one of the things that I made sure to talk about with Dave and Rob were the things that I've learned, um, you know, from other senior centers who have renovated, you know, design features that should be included for older adults with dementia or with low visual acuity. Um, you know, I, I pointed out a myriad of things that we can do to kind of increase or improve the wayfinding and people who have, you know, low mobility, how do they navigate the center? Um, so those, those are all part of the conversation for sure. Um, there's a lot of research out there. There are special design firms that focus on senior building, um, of which I have, talked to and, and read a lot about. So I just made sure to include those in the conversation. And I think as far as it goes with people who can't come to the center, that's where transportation access comes in. You know, well, we have- When I say can't come for any number of reasons, even the level of energy, um, just just wondering, I've I've just been wondering. Yeah, so I mean, there are different areas in the center. Um, the lounge can be a quiet hangout space. Um, you know, we do fast paced exercise. We do slower paced exercise. We have a lively cafe on Wednesdays, you know, so I think you're never gonna please everybody, but in designing a space, you wanna have a little something for everyone. You wanna have that quiet reading nook. You wanna have a place where people can talk and be social um, and different kinds of activity rooms for all the programming. And I would definitely still emphasize though, like the transportation is key. Having a Monday, Wednesday, Friday van is huge, but uh, you know, a lot of other senior centers in the area do five days a week service. And some of them even have multiple vans. You know, people who, who don't drive, people who use walkers or wheelchairs, you know, the, the van is a lifeline for that. And that was really why I wanted to get the silver shuttle up and running was for the people who want to come to the center but can't get there, that gives them a way to do it. And if you don't have any more comments, I know Christina has her hand up. Uh, well, <clears throat> I think I'm not gonna mention it because okay. it, then it's gonna get off topic. I just, I don't know. I just felt that if the people the same way that we do information sessions and invite the elderly and seniors to find out about services, the other organizations have to be informed that they need to do something similar for the population that is now coming into the center and preying on the elderly. And I don't accept that they cannot do anything about it. Someone has to tell them that they reach out to them and say, this is an issue. It's not just removing someone. It's giving them, like Jacqueline said, their people, giving mm -hmm. them the same respect, giving them a source, an info session where they can gather if they still have those breakfasts at the Unitarian Society. Mm -hmm. Bring people to talk to them about what services are available for them, where they can go during the daytime, and 
uh, maybe people to talk to them about how them being around seniors that are vulnerable affects the seniors, you know? And uh, so I, I think something can be done differently, not just, oh, remove them. Oh, give them a place to go. Tell them where to go. Give Bring those professionals to talk to them about what's available for them. Because I always, when someone's on the corner asking for a dollar, people say, oh, they should get a job. But that same person is going to stab me from my pocketbook if I don't give them that dollar. So the analogy I'm trying to make is we can't ignore people that need because once we ignore any population, they're going to prey on another population. I think obviously yeah. it's a complicated issue that requires a variety of different strategies. And I have to say, for my time at the senior center, I've seen situations and I, um, I applaud all the staff that have managed them um, because they're not, they're not easy. I think it's an ongoing challenge, certainly for our town and our world and, you know, to drill down to, to bangs as well. But I can definitely um, add something though, because I don't want you to think that people just come in and we kick them out. People do get services. And this particular individual who I'm talking about, I've worked with him in shelters before. He knows about the programs that are in the area. He's gotten help. He just, if he's not taking his medication, he's having a really bad day. And no one coming in to the center is going to dissuade somebody who is telling me that he wants me to call the police because he's going to hurt somebody. You know, those are the situations where I want APD removing this person. I've worked with homeless individuals. I've worked at the survival center. I, I understand I grew up with nothing and have had to work very hard in life. Um, you know, I'm very empathetic, but once people turn that corner from needing empathy and needing help into being a, ha a potential hazard for other people, mm -hmm. I've got to act. Um, but yeah, we, we do. And, you know, there, there are a lot of services and a lot that I'm familiar with and can let people know about, um, you know, mm -hmm. but th this particular individual, I don't think any of that would have made any difference to, because uh, well, he was I just rest, having a really bad day. I rest my case then. It sounds like it's just one individual and not like different, a whole group of people preying on the seniors in the senior center. Yeah. Yeah, we do. It doesn't tend to, it's not like people descending on it but there do tend to be like I said every couple couple times a month we get one person who's coming in and they want to make it their space and it's the senior space and so we have to we try to balance that and it usually goes pretty well but not not always okay Haley do you want to resume your report do you have other um the only other thing I was going to say is that we are doing or we um are letting the Hampshire County Food Policy Committee do um, an oral storytelling presentation on Friday, October 6th at 4 p.m. So they've interviewed a lot of people who are experiencing food insecurity, um, some of whom are older adults, and they're going to be presenting that at the Bang Center on that Friday night in um, the first Friday, I think, in October. It should be really interesting. It was something I um, really wanted. When, when I heard about it, I said I really want to have it here at the bank center. Um, cause I think it'll be really eye opening for a lot of people in the community. Um, you know, Christina, Jacqueline, like you said, there are a lot of people who just don't know how little people have and how difficult that is. Um, so these kind of programs help with that. What was the date on that? Uh, it's Friday, October 6th at 4 PM. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is that new Haley or has something like that? Yeah. Happened? So they, I think it's new. I, I've never heard. I think it's new for them too, because they they're doing like this big storytelling circle, um, and they had reached out to me back in like April or May um, to try to coordinate doing the room. And they've spent the summer interviewing people, so now they they've compiled their the stories and are ready to share them. That's awesome. Okay. Any other questions or comments for Haley? Anything new for fall that you wanted to um, 
share with us or? Uh, we'll do a health fair on Tuesday, October 17th from two to four. Um, so I've pulled together a bunch of different, um, you know, local healthcare providers. Uh, I like doing this in October because it's open enrollment season. So when people are trying to navigate health insurance, it's very timely. Um, you know, again, I think a lot of people just don't know the options that are around and there are, there are quite a few um, different providers in the area. So we'll, we'll have that and should be good. I'm hoping for a good turnout. And, you know, unfortunately, some of the fall time activities I was hoping to do, it's just been very challenging, again, not having any staff um, or not having enough staff to do it. So I think once we get our admin assistant in place, I'm just going to try to focus on doing some, some holiday, some winter themed programs. Um, tends to be a difficult time for everyone, but I think particularly older adults, if you don't have family nearby, if you've lost someone in your life, it, you know, it's the holidays aren't always bright and cheery. So I think part of my job is to make it more cheery for people. Um, so we'll be concentrating on that once Christina, uh, not Christina, but Diana gets on board. Great. Okay. Um, we'll move on to old business. So our calendar review and can you do a screen share on that, Haley? Uh, I'm going to have to look for the calendar. While you're looking, um, so we did mention earlier, next week is the town block party on Thursday, the 21st, and we are going to have a table there. So i um, wondering if um, for folks who are planning on going, if you could help us out, and um, I think if we could do our shifts at the table, that wouldn't be an undue burden. Um, so there are any fine folks on COA who would throw their hand up and help us staff the table? Mark? Excellent, Mark. It's going to be fun. We've got some really great giveaway items. We have a special celebrity guest who will be joining us. Um, we're really going all out because we're across from the fire station and they have like Sparky the dog. They have a bubble machine. They have like the fire trucks. They have all these toys. Mm -hmm. um, so we're trying to compete with them or at least I'm trying to compete with them, you know, show them who's boss in town, senior <laughs> center, standing out always. I think we're going to need an animal, a mascot. I think so. Yeah. We might have to get some kind of costume, although I a don't know what it Oakley? would be. Yeah. Or if we had dogs, if people have a pet, people love animals. Maybe That's if true. we did that. All right. I want to lose focus here. Anyone else? Uh, it starts from at five and it runs until nine, but you're certainly not expected to stay until nine. Usually town people leave like once it gets dark because then it's just concert time. Yep. Anyone else willing to help out at the table? I apologize. I'll be out of town that day. Uh, that whole week actually so. oh, okay we'll take okay. lots of pictures yeah yep. okay. i urge you to uh see what you can do about helping us out i will also be there mark so we'll be having a blast at the table with all these nifty giveaways um is it okay if i bring somebody else who's not a senior to sit i'm at not the a table? senior and i'll be there well, and to be at the table. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. Okay. All right. Just one. As long sure. as they're ready to rep the senior center very hard. If they're willing to go all out and talk about how awesome we are, then anyone okay. can do that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And hopefully others will uh, discover that they can they can help. And if so, please just you know either email Haley or myself. We'd appreciate it. All right. So one, looking at the one last question, I'm sorry on that topic. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that maybe we could use the neighbors um, uh, listing to ask for volunteers? Well, I don't know if we need a whole lot of volunteers. I'll be honest with you, just because okay. a lot more town departments signed up this year and the space in front of the fire department's only so big. Okay. Um, one thing actually that might be really cool is if people wanted to like 
because we wanted to have people like planted in the crowd and like hand out some things and say, hey, this, you know, the this tense this way, um, we could probably use that. That would okay. be really fun. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's focus our attention on um, the month of September. So in addition to the block party, we have the, um, we had listed the AARP grant ideas. Um, and we're gonna circle back to that in a second because um, we've had numerous conversations about grants. So we'll just put that on hold for right now. Coming up in October, um, the health fair that Haley already mentioned, um, the volunteer fair. Yes. So I, we, Julie and I are committed to doing it, um, but it, it admittedly has been hard for both her and I. Um, so that one I might put in italics as a, this year we, we couldn't do it, but it's a okay. good idea to do one in October. Um, so hopefully we can, and finish putting it all together um, in time because students are around. When we did the first one, I think we had to do it at a certain time based on a grant that we had received, but it was like May or something. And obviously the students aren't around. You don't get as much of a turnout, um, but yeah, I will definitely confirm once we get all our, our ducks in a row on that. Okay, excellent. And then there's a fire department open house in October, right? On the 14th. Yeah. So if you've never been, the fire department does this really awesome open house. They have all the fire trucks. They have that bubble machine and Sparky and um, they do like free donuts and coffee and they allow other town departments to table. Um, so again, it's just a good way to get out in the community and meet people and say, we're here and we're awesome. Um, so I really like doing it. That event is going to be Saturday, October 14th early. I think they run it. I think it starts at like nine and goes to like one o'clock or something, but that'll okay. definitely be up on the town calendar. Okay. And that's a great um, event. If you have young children, um, either grandchildren or neighbors or whatnot, that's a very fun event because they're usually handing out the um, firefighter hats among other things. So yeah, kids really enjoy that. Okay. All right. Um, hold on one sec. I just have to, I have my son's dog who's unhappy. I'm going to be right back so we don't hear barking. But the next thing we're going to talk about is um, new subcommittees. Could I go back to the calendar before we lead it, leave it? Sure. What's your question? Um, I'm really happy that we have this now. Um, the idea was so that we could do more planning and look into the future and be ready for things. I'm wondering if we can get dates on them so we know what what week of the month it is, um, the days. I'm wondering if we want to talk about spreading things out so that we can man or woman them uh, uh, with I'm sorry, energy. I missed the beginning of your question, Chad. Yeah, I wanted to congratulate you and, and Haley for getting the calendar out. The idea to it was um, so that we could do more planning and organize our energies to, um, you know, be ready for these things that are on here. Yep. Um, I was wondering if we could get the actual dates of when they are and whether we wanted to talk about spreading things out, the things that we can control so that we can get more energy into, um, you know, staffing them, uh, mm -hmm. making, them making them really good things, uh, pumping them up and that sort of thing. Yep, uh, yep. I, so I think that we is- left um, it, Just before we left it, I wanted to make those three points, that's all. Sure. Sure. No, the, well, the calendar is new for us and I look at it as a live document. We're constantly tweaking it. And I think um, that's an excellent point that we we don't want to have, you know, one month have, you know, 10 events and two months have nothing at all. So um, I do think it's going to continue to evolve. And what I do expect once you know, the senior center is fully staffed is we're going to be adding many more things to this calendar. Um, so yeah, 
Yeah, I would definitely. All I'm saying is, several. I'd like I'd like to see if we can talk about it rather than it just be laid out and presented to us, and that's that. Um, if you get some input from the members of this organization, they might be able to tell you what they could do in certain months. Um, traditionally, um, before Haley came, everybody dropped out of the Council on Aging over the summer. There was no work done in the summer. Uh, yeah. Don't know if Unfortunately, you missed a or... meeting, Chad, where we we kind of introduced the calendar and kind of yep. talked about how we were going to utilize it. So yep. I'm happy to have a, a separate conversation with you, but I, I don't want to take our well, meeting time yep. to go backwards on things just because our you time look, is If precious. you look at the minutes, you'll see why I presented it as something that we should do. I, I don't know, like you say, if that's changed since then or, or what. And, but we are doing it. We're talking about it right now. And we asked people Great. if they were helpful. And on the agenda for the meeting, it does lay out the date. So when I was talking about ah. this calendar with Jean, this is only month by month because these dates might change from one year to the next. I don't know ahead of time what the block party date is, but I know it happens in September. And if I know it happens in September, then in June or July, I can start planning for it. You know, at each individual meeting, we can talk about or, you know, the month before or two months before, what is this date that we need to be aware of? But I think just long term planning, you just want to have like a rough frame. Like if if we're looking at this calendar and it's January and we know that the senior center open house happens in April, well, then we should all be thinking about, am I going to be able to participate? You know, what organizations did we work with last year? Who could we invite this year? You know, have we reached out to all our town counselors and invited them? Um, you know, it was purposely designed just to be a month by month because dates change. And, you know, I, as you get closer, you can set it, but, you know, the work can be done months ahead of time without knowing the exact date. I will also say, as I said, I think it's going to continue to evolve. Um, and as, you know, folks have ideas and suggestions, it's, you know, we'll be looking to um, revise the calendar. So, um, I just find it always useful to be able to kind of look ahead and see what's coming um, because among the things is activities can kind of come up on you quickly and some of these things take a lot of time so I, I want us to be very planful. Um, as such, I um, want to segue to new business which is the formation of um, a couple of subcommittees. The first one um, to focus on grants. Um, we had a recent experience where we found out about a, a grant from um, AARP and it looked fabulous and it was fabulous, but for folks who have ever written a grant, you know it's a tremendous amount of work and you can't do that overnight, um, particularly ones when we need um, expertise from the town, trying to get their time and attention and documents from them. So um, it was, although we didn't end up submitting a grant, it was, a, I feel like a fruitful experience in that we learned that we can do some homework now. Um, and that's forming this grant subcommittee where we can kind of pull together documents and kind of get our ducks in a row, if you will, so that when a grant application presents itself, we'll be able to move um, much more quickly um, and be in a, a better position to be able to execute the grant without pulling everybody's hair out. Um, Dawn and Sarah, you are involved in it. Is there anything you would like to, to add to our grant um, experience? I just that I thought um, after, I mean, I agree with you entirely, if, you, know, you know, getting a few people together in the last, you know, week or so before the thing is due was not an easy thing. But like in this particular case, uh, if we had, if it was something we were planning ahead, there were actually a lot of resources online, like this particular organization, the part of the state that wants to get out these grants, is practically falling all over you to get you to put the grant in correctly and stuff like that. So I think if we had had the time, we would have had a pretty high rate of success with that particular one. But um, I agree with setting up a committee to look at those things. Yeah, me too. I, I think there were, you know, there was good potential. It's just, it's hard when you have to rely on people in the town and everybody's so stretched, stretched for time. So if we 
have a little more, we can plan a little further ahead to get those requests out to give them the time they need to get us what this information back. I think that'll just make it more feasible to do these things. Okay. So who would like to be on the grant subcommittee? I can do that. Great. It depends. I, I'd raise my hand halfway, depending on what um, specific skills are needed. Um, you know, uh, there's things all the way from, uh, you know, counting things, stuffing envelopes, sort of mechanical things. There's uh, writing, there's uh, planning, there's uh, interpersonal contact. Um, so depending on what is sought, um, I guess, yeah, the subcommittee is going to tell us this is something that that's already been worked on a little bit. Well, what I, what I need from a subcommittee who does grants are people who are really proficient writers, people who know how to speak grants because it, it is its own language, right. um, people who are tech savvy enough that you can go and search for grants on the web, that you can research them, that you can, you know, you can, as a grant subcommittee member, come up with, hey, I found this particular grant, um, meet with me, talk about, you know, what, how could we use that funding here at the senior center, and then assist me in the application process. And by assist, you know, my schedule is such that sometimes I'm not going to have the ability to write the grant, but I could certainly review. I could certainly be part of the editing process. Um, so again, we need people who are really good communicators, written, um, you know, really strong writers, and um, and that's what I that's what I would need. All right. So it's not just from the, the Department of Elder Affairs. It's any grants, um, federal and state. Yeah. Anything that could be federal. possibly applicable. Some of the grants deal with ADA issues okay. or making the building accessible. Um, MCOA does a lot of grant opportunities um, okay. and keeping an eye open. All right, I'm not a writer. I don't write grants. I have, um, you know, directed grant writing teams and, and manage grants and that sort of thing, but I'm not a writer. That's why I ask a little mm -hmm. about that. Um, so you could be going to, to um, what is it? The uh, grants registry, the that place in uh, the library in the quad down in Springfield, and researching through through that uh, whole compendium of grants, and it's just a wide open. It's a wide open kind of quote grants. I I would get involved in some of that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very good. The other subcommittee um, I would like us to create is regarding a um, program review. And it, it does appear on the calendar and I had dropped it in in January, but that was just kind of arbitrary. I just feel like this would be a, a good time for us to get started on that. Um, and what I mean by program review, and Haley, feel free to weigh in if I'm off kilter here, but um, I think it's been some time since all the programs and services offered by the Senior Center have been looked at. And I think we need to do um, a, a review to kind of map out what needs we're, we're meeting, you know, who's the program for, are we, you know, how many people are we attracting, um, you know, all the different categories and, that's going to, you know, when we complete that, it will give us a good idea of what we're good at, where, where we're, you know, our areas of strength, if you will. And also, I think it will help us identify areas that we need to focus upon. Maybe there's some populations we're not meeting their needs. We haven't offered programming for them. So um, those are the kinds of things I mean by program review. I hope that is. Yeah, that. that very much so. Um, you know, it has been quite a long time and we've, we've definitely tried a lot of different kinds of programs, some of which were new to the senior center, you know, since I've been here. Um, you know, we know that we're not meeting every demographic that we would like to be meeting. Um, 
you know, I think for the last year and a half, my focus has just been on like broad appeal kind of programs, just as a way to kind of bring people in the door with the expectation mm -hmm. that more foot traffic could lead to more specialized programming being developed. But, you know, our foot traffic is still not um, where I would like it to be. It's grown quite a, a lot, um, but I think we could do a little bit more. Um, so yeah, we, we need to just kind of go through and look at how many people are coming to this program. You know, are we spending money on this program? Is it cost effective to do this program? How could we improve it? And again, bringing in some, some new people to the center. Okay. Who would like to be on that subcommittee, the program review? Yeah. Dennis? Yeah. If it's okay to DM more than one subcommittee, I'll do yeah. that as well. Excellent. Thank you, Mark. I will tentatively say yes. <laughs> okay. okay. That's a yes. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else have some free time? I think I think this subcommittee in particular, I would like us to meet sooner rather than later. You know, again, like I said, the the holidays are coming up and that can be a really stressful time. I think it's a really good time to look at what we've got going on and what we could improve upon. Um, I will volunteer for that as well. I, I'm very hopeful that this is going to be a very enlightening experience and, you know, as I said, confirm what we do well and really help identify um, kind of the future, what we should be going after. So um, the other thing I feel like, and I apologize, you do not have this on the agenda. So if anybody wants to stop me, feel free. But the other piece of information that I feel like would be really beneficial for us to know is to get a clearer picture of who the Amherst seniors are. Mm -hmm. um, Demographically, and I know we've got some information, but I would like to see if we can drill down and get even more. Um, and so I will volunteer myself to seek out um, census information from the town clerk. I don't know exactly what, um, what, how much can be shared and what, what they have, but I just feel like I really like I'd like to have clarity on kind of who we are as a cohort to then kind of measure as we look at what we're offering. Well, yeah, so you're saying that the information that you want to get from town hall should also be part of this committee? I'm sorry, say that again? In my opinion, that should be a part of the, of the, the, the senior center review process. Am I right? Yes. Yes. I mean, it's if you're figuring out what programs are being offered, then you should also be able to start, uh, use as a starting point who your audience is to begin with. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what makes sense to me. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. And to then me you too. can kind of map out who's, you know, what's what. Yep. Then you compare it to who's actually coming to the center and, and yep. okay, there's two studies that have been done. The age and dementia friendly has mm -hmm. um, their statistics. Um, there's also a health and needs survey done out of UMass um, of the town uh, just after that. So there's those two. Um, you also have... Um, the American, I forget the full name of it, American Family Survey that comes alternate to the census, the federal census, and then you have the census itself. So there's some that are pretty fine-tuned and some that are pretty broad-based. Um, but this gets back to the strategic plan idea I've been trying to go forward with for um, ever. <laughs> Uh, so we're not quite there yet, Chad, but we got to do our kind of homework and we yeah. can work toward things. But thank you for identifying those other resources. And if anybody is, anyone else is aware of any other resources, please, please share. 
that would be that would be great. Um, age and dementia action plan. So hopefully all of you had sufficient time to review um, the report and um, the action plan that was um, shared out. Um, Haley said that um, with our agenda. Um, so obviously there's all these, a variety of domains um, and um, what we wanted to look at is what is one goal we can look to um, implement because there we could, well, we could work full time for the next year and not get everything done. But um, realistically, let's start with one thing in terms of what we can focus on it with the hope being we complete that one, we can move on to another one, right? That it's not one and done, that it's just the beginning, outlining the process. Um, you wanna add anything to that, Haley? Yeah, I think um, what I think would be really achievable is if we focused on social participation and community services. Um, you know, some of the things like housing, you know, we can definitely be advocates for, but that's gonna be a lot more challenging to, achieve, you know, if one of the goals is say, let me just look at things really quickly. Um, you know, expand the home health care and home health care workforce um, and advocate for the coverage of home health care services by Medicare. You know, that's something that could take many years, but we could make concrete steps if we focus on, um, you know, participation and doing things like um, working with UMass and local schools for intergenerational programming, um, you know, that could be a lot more achievable in the short term. So I would suggest that we concentrate on what can be achieved within a year or two. Um, I think, you know, people probably didn't have enough time to really comb through it. I would like us to just read through it and then next month come together and each one person share one goal that they would like to do, you know, with the parameter that it be something that can be accomplished within a year or two. Um, Cause that I think easy wins help build morale, that helps build confidence, um, you know, and then we'd be in a better position to maybe tackle some of those more challenging things that are gonna require a vast amount of resources or, or a lot of people to make work. Is there an actual list um, that you have composed or is this? Yes. So I sent that out with the agenda and the minutes. Oh, okay. So I won't I won't get that because of the screwed up uh, email. Mm. Um, so you could stop by the senior center and pick up a hard copy. The report was compiled by Becky Bosch from the Pioneer Valley Planning right. Commission. Okay. It actually, I don't know what your email situation is, Chad, but the action plan has gone out, I think a couple of times. Um, so I don't know if your email situation is recent phenomenon. But... No, it's June, July, August, and now September. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anyone have any other questions about the age and dementia? So I, well, I just was, I, you know, because I spent a lot of time looking at this in the last week. Um, but so I noticed like there's what some, they aren't simple, but like I think what we're talking about some specific things like even um, trying to come up with a voluntary registry of people mm -hmm. uh, who are in town who have dementia. And then and then they're talking about, you know, maybe bringing together other, other people who provide services and whatever. So even just, I think what you're saying is if we even attack something, not necessarily that one, but something like that, that one thing we could actually get that done yeah. and, and that would lead to helping other things. So so mm -hmm. I, I'm a I'm a big fan of breaking it into small pieces. So um so what you're saying is let is are we gonna discuss coming up with that next meeting? Is that what you're mm -hmm. saying? To to just review and come up with one thing. Okay. We get to fight it out in other words. Yeah, that's right. Well okay. or if we come up with nine things, I mean we could prioritize and chip away at that too. Yeah. Right. And Mark, you had a question. Yeah, I just I was wondering because I'm so new to all this. Um, does the the town health department help us with any of these concerns? Yeah. 
yeah, mm -hmm. actually. So we do, um, we have like a freestanding kind of, um, nurses hours at the bank center. Um, and I have definitely worked with Olivia. She actually just participated in a training that I had coordinated about suicide prevention in older adults. And we were joined by, by the crest department and by, um, one of the firefighters, very helpful. Um, so she's been great. You know, I definitely send people up her way and she's, indicate that she's more than willing to do blood pressure screenings and, um, you know, a, a lot of different programs. Um, it's just a matter of getting the word out about them. Cause you know, if no one shows up, it's not as effective. Sarah. Yeah. I, I mean, I was I, kind of riffing off of what Don just said. I wondered if there would, we have these event, these town events coming up mm -hmm. would, if and I don't I know we have, we'll decide at the next meeting but would there be some benefit to having a sign up sheet that we could set at the table if this is going to be one of our priority areas to mm -hmm. work here I mean, we at some point we'll need to compile that list so would there be some benefit to having to at least starting to do that at some of these big outreach events where you could say are you or someone you know your neighbor could are these people we could start reaching out to so I you know I yeah. just didn't know if it would be worth even if that's not the one we are going to be our primary focus at some level we do need to know who those people are oh yeah I would for sure um all that goes to community outreach relationship building um you know it and it might not even be that we're connecting with an older adult it might be someone's adult child someone's grandchild that sees that and so yeah I would say I mean to me there's really no reason to just not spread the message in any and all venues. Um, that That is the key to being successful in Amherst is just making sure that you close your eyes and you're thinking the words Amherst Senior Center or, you know, action plan steps. Um, so we just want to embed those earworms. I think the other thing we want to do is um, we want to do a better job at um, our self-promotion um, so that we are taking advantage of these large um, programs and collecting information from people, um, including, you know, emails um, so that electronically we have a, a bigger list of folks, um, you know, is people are coming to us, you know, we want to make the most of that experience and let them know about um, what's happening and what we need. And to that end, Dennis, this is a nice segue for you. You want to tell them what you've been working on? Yeah, well, I do a lot of photography for the town. And so uh, that includes photography of events that have to do with the senior center, the COA, and, and that sort of thing. And so I've accumulated a, a group and we re, we've reviewed a group of uh, photographs that will go on a triptych exhibition board. And so basically the last step for me now will be to get enlargements made of these photographs that I've already shot. And we'll be putting them up on the board so that Gene will be able to use them at, let's say, the uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 block party, and and other events where the COA will be trying to raise its uh, its uh, its profile, letting other people know what's going on and how active the senior center is. So that's uh, that's where we are right now, and uh, I have to do some measuring and some uh, ordering from, from the labs. And pretty soon that'll be done. And it kind of looks like I'll hopefully be delivering maybe the whole product Ooh. on Monday. Can't wait. Exciting. <laughs> Can't wait. Um, and to your point about um, like marketing messages, Jean, so I had tried to coordinate, but unfortunately my first date didn't work out. Um, but if Tuesday, September 26th at 1030 works for people, and I can be a little flexible on Tuesday. Um, I think it would be a really wonderful idea to have everybody on the COA and as many members of the friends group join us at the bank center um, 
so that I can talk about some of the statistics, some of the things that we're working on, you know, what are some good phrases to use when you're talking to people, um, you know, anybody representing the COA should be able to do just a quick elevator speech with, you know, with your eyes closed about what are the key facts that we have going on? You know, how many people are we serving? Um, what are some of the big issues right now, um, nationally, locally with older adults? Um, so if people are able to join me 1030 on Tuesday, the 26th, or if not, let me know, and maybe we can just do like a separate meeting. Um, I can't make it Tuesday. I, I, I can't. I can't. Good for me. Okay. Well, you'll I take, see you on Mondays. <laughs> we can talk. And Jacqueline, if you want to come by another time, I'd be happy to do that too. Um, Cause I think it's really important. We should all be using the same phrases. We should all use, you know, the same vernacular. We want to be consistent so that when people hear about us, they think, oh, wow, like they, they've got it together. They know what they're talking about. They're really diligent. They're always showing up at meetings and being very vocal. Um, it'll just help us accomplish what we're trying to accomplish, you know, not just raise the profile, but do it in a way that we can actually get some benefit from it. I wonder, do you think um, it would be beneficial when all of that is compiled to create, I'm going to say a cheat sheet? Yes. Yeah. That people should take notes and do a cheat sheet. I would honestly like to see too, if people do want to come on that Tuesday, write, write what you think is good. Um, I actually find like when I'm doing marketing editing or just any kind of editing, if you bring me something, it's a lot easier to understand like how you write, how you communicate with the world. So if you have something, that quick elevator speech, bring it. And I think we can all talk about it because my goal is just to get us all on the same page so that if it's you showing up, Gene, at an event, or if it's Mark, the same information is getting communicated to the town. So I have an idea, mm -hmm. as I've been known to have. Yes. And that is um, if for whoever kind of nails this first, could we videotape them? Ooh, if they want to be videotaped, I won't force someone to do that. But it would be good to put up, you know, or just to have. Or even if you want to be our, you know, poster child. I would be too. happy to be the poster child. Well, I'm, I'm just but thinking. I think some maybe, other people should share the limelight. <laughs> maybe useful for folks to hear. I mean, it's more than the words, right? If you're going to yeah. be effective in oh, yeah. delivery and your tone and your body language. Public speaking is an art. Um, so, yeah. And you, you have to be able to get up in front of a well not always a huge crowd but like a crowd so if it's one person if it's two people um you know but we we just want to be a little bit more consistent and a little bit more focused because sometimes I have the feeling that you know not everybody knows we have this amount of exercise programs or that we have a social work support group for people whose um, partners have memory loss and you know, we don't always know all the things that we're doing and that's step one. If we're going to advocate for more, we have to know what we already have before we can get additional resources. No. Okay. Everybody polish your elevator pitches. That's right. Okay. Um, we have some old minutes that we need to approve. So let's go back. The furthest is June. Last time we did not approve the June meeting minutes because um, there was something missing, I think, or something you added. And you added it, Terry. So, yeah. Is you there a me to, You wanted me to add um, annual calendar. The calendar, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's been out added. So is there a motion to um, move to approve the June COA meeting minutes? So moved. Second? Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Any opposed? Okay. Wonderful. And then the July minutes which were sent out. Does anybody have any corrections or, or um, questions about those? 
Nope, I move we approve the July minutes as written. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, excellent. All right. I don't have any topics not reasonably anticipated. Um, our next COA meeting is the 19th. Um, I had to move it because um, that week is the MCOA conference. So I will be in Danvers talking about all things Council on Aging. So for those folks, it'll be the third Thursday, not the second Thursday. Yeah. So if you would mark your mark your calendars and we will have completed several large events. Mm -hmm. Um, by then that we can report on. I would just like to um, acknowledge we had some, um, we had the um, the public safety event. Yeah, um, I, would, I forgot to mention that. We had a couple hundred people show up and it was really nice. It was a really good event. Um, so if you missed it, uh, we had like... Vera Cruzana as our food truck. We had a DJ. They had all the public safety vehicles. They had the the safety trailer, which is just like a the mini house that they have fake fires in. So as a kid, you learn like you know duck and cover and go out the window. Um, <clears throat> it was great. We had many town councilors show up. Paul Balkerman was there. Um, it was a really fun day. We did car seat inspections. We had lots of information tables. We had the to go bag. Um, that Anne had worked on. I was, yeah, I was just, oh, um, canine demonstrations. It was just really fun. Um, it was a great day. And I just want to thank those of you that turned out to help us with the table. Really appreciated your, your efforts and hope others can join us in upcoming programs so we can share the wealth there. Because um, I think it's important that, that our community see all our different faces. Um, and hear from us. And I know some folks are, are challenged in terms of their schedule. Um, but I think there's um, lots of ways that folks can contribute to the COA above and beyond the meeting. So I want to throw one idea out. And I think some of you already do this, but to join the um, newsletters of other communities so that we can kind of see what they're doing um, and glean any ideas. And that's a matter of subscribing online. So if you have computer issues, it won't, not a good choice for you, Chad, but for- No, I can do that. Others, um, I think that would be um, beneficial for us. Um, and, you know, talking to your friends and neighbors about the senior center, I think we need to, um, we need to, our voices need to be heard as we've been saying. And I, I feel like at this point, we're like a, a whisper in the community and we need we need to turn the volume up. So um, we need to do it a wide variety of ways. And um, I think ideas you have are always gonna be most welcome as to how we can, um, be successful in making our case to the town that our seniors need more and deserve better. And um, we we wanna get a little more sophisticated in our lobbying efforts, I will say. And we can talk more about that at another time, but um, just wanna put it out there. We, we yeah. need to start carrying the, the banner there, so. Christina, you have a question? Oh, you're on mute. <laughs> I need a quicker picker upper, like a snack. <laughs> <laughs> I've been at this all day, meetings and anyway, uh -huh. I just basically want to say that I already do that no matter what. Awesome. I, I, I'm on so many lists, it ain't funny. I am on the Northampton senior list. I am on the Amherst Neighbors group list. I'm always looking at what others are doing. I'm always interested in what others are doing. And if you need 
a watchdog for what others are doing. I even suggested that we make our newsletter more visual in an earlier meeting. And um, like we use constant, I know I use constant contact for um, my communication with my church folks. And so there's ways of making something more appealing um, in a visual, audio visual mm -hmm. world. And um, so offhand, I will tell you that we don't offer enough art. Mm -hmm. And so this is one place that we can improve because I was looking high and low for art courses. And um, while I found some in other towns, I found none in our town. So I can I can work on that. That would be huge if you could uh, be. Just tell me what dog. your expectations are. You want me to look and bring yeah. back the information and see what the ideas are? I can that, do that because um, I'm doing that anyway. Yeah, if you did that, and then also like if there are names, like if they're working with like such and such artists, somebody I can reach out to because that's one of the things I've been struggling with is just not knowing like mm -hmm. who t would offer that program. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. That'd be awesome. I went in person to the uh, Northampton Senior Center and I sat there um, because when I have a doctor's appointment, I go sit there and I listen and I talk to people and I read everything on the bulletin boards and try to connect with other people. So there's a lot of ways to do it. You know, yep. as long as I wear a mask, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, excellent. That would be great. Dawn? So that just reminded me, thank you, Christina, for bringing that up. I had mentioned this before, but my daughter is an art teacher at, uh, at Amherst oh. High School, and she's very interested in hooking up the students at the school with programs at the senior center. And with, so the students a be able to get to you know, know and understand the population, but also provide any kind of, you know, she doesn't know what you would like or need, but can provide a lot of um, um, uh, help and services with the students there uh, for programs. And I guess my question is, who should she talk to? Should she talk directly to you, Haley? Or... Yeah, yeah, okay. that'd I will, be awesome. I, I'm sorry, I've forgotten about that That's until okay. now. And talk I'll... about grants. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. grant idea right there. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. Getting kids uh, to write uh, older folks' uh, memoir and so forth. Yeah, all, all sorts, all sorts of, of ideas. Yeah, there's all kinds of cool opportunities for intergenerational stuff. Yep. That's great. Excellent. All right, I'll make sure to have her contact. Thanks. You. Okay. All right. Anything else? Uh, Chad, do you have your hand up? Yeah, just the uh, same old question. Um, a lot of the boards are meeting in person. Is this ever going to meet in person again? Yeah, I'm just, I I don't have a date for that yet, but it will happen. Yeah, well, COVID's back, so that we have to wait true. and see. Yeah. It isn't just COVID, Chad, you know. I had five minutes to throw my trash out mm. when I finished work before I got on this meeting. So, you know, for some of us, it's hard. If it, you want to have a meeting on a Wednesday, I could go in person sometimes, but not mm. not any other day of the week because I'm working two positions and it's I just couldn't do it. Yeah. And today was a beautiful day. It would have been a beautiful day to be outside, you know? Yeah. I will say when when it looks like we are going to go in person, it it's my hope that we would certainly be able to um, give you all fair warning and kind of talk about what that would mean and how the meeting would would happen, particularly out of respect for folks who have some health concerns. So, um, you know, my my aim is that, you know, that won't be sprung upon you. Oh, by the way, next week's meeting is in person, but that we'll have some, you know, time to, to plan so that we can, you know, be comfortable. So, Terry, okay. Terry was saying something and then I heard you say something about COVID 
But I yeah, was COVID's, ba <clears throat> COVID's back. A lot of people have COVID, yeah, so yeah. you just have to be careful. Yeah. It's on the upsurge. Yeah. So I know this is a slight segue, but Haley, it's my understanding that our health department will not be doing clinics for the public. I don't know that. I actually have okay. not kept my finger on that pulse. Um, I mean, obviously they don't have a director yet. She doesn't start until I think October. So that might be part of the delay or maybe postponing. I don't know. Um, okay. Yeah. I mentioned, asked one of the folks, I don't even know what their position was. And I know that they work somewhere in there. I don't know exactly what they do, but they said okay. because it's no longer an emergency. Oh, was your, did you say flu or COVID? COVID. Yeah. That's possible sure. since we're not okay. in a state of emergency. I don't, again, I don't know for sure because I haven't asked anyone, but it is possible since the, the state of emergency was lifted that they will just use like, you know, your primary care or something like CVS. Yeah, or CVS. Yeah. 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 Okay. Very good. You know, because there's also like the storage issue with vaccines, you have to keep them at a certain temperature. And I think the COVID vaccine in particular was one where you had to be really like cautious about the temperature. Yeah. yeah. And we have to pay now for the test. I paid for one from Target and they're not easy to get. So they'll tell you if you go online, how many are on the shelf. And I said there were four. And I rushed and got that one uh, so I can have it just in case. Can we not also still get tests from the health department right down the hallway? Yeah, I think they still have some test kits. Yeah. You know. yeah. They were all out of them on Tuesday. Oh. They? Yeah, the oh. thing now is that it's mutated enough that those aren't the right tests anymore. This is called Omicron 2 now that's coming. And the old tests are for the very first one, COVID. <laughs> I feel like we're out of our area of expertise now. So yeah, perhaps at, we can at the very check least, in with I the know, public health department and <laughs> offer an update <laughs> next month. At but, the very least, we should have a health expert. Um, and if the health department right now doesn't have a leader, they can contact someone a oh, physician yeah. or someone in this community that deals with infectious diseases and have them come and talk to people, whether on Zoom or whatever. I mean, Zoom would be the most convenient, you know? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, I thank you all. And um, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Are I so you... move. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. Excellent. Thank you all. Have a wonderful evening, a great month, and uh, see you at the block party. Take care. Have a good night, kids. Bye. You too. Take care, Terry.